So first off, um, the Ratchet and Clank community put together a great guide. It's got all the hotkeys, a lot of downloads for things that you'll need, and a complete build that I'm using, um, that I'm going to be using in this video. But if you're watching this in the future, I'd recommend checking out the actual GitHub page for the emulator because any updates or fixes is going to be in that release page. It's not going to be in uh, that version in the guide. They also recommend using the debug version instead of the normal PCS X2.exe. The only difference I've seen is that the debug version runs a lot slower. I haven't noticed a difference between desyncs or stuff like that. So I'll be using the normal version just because it runs much faster. So I'm just going to run through some of the uh, different emulator settings that I'm using. So the first way that you can manipulate the game is by slowing it down or speeding it up. So you can see right here I'm on turbo mode but it's not running faster just because like, I'm recording right now. Um, and you do that by pressing tab to switch between the normal and the turbo mode. Uh, right now I press shift and tab and that's going to slow down so now the game clearly is running slower. It's running at, at most 50%. So that's one way that you can uh, do better inputs for your tasks. Um, if your game supports 16 by 9 I would recommend switching the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 in the game and the emulator as well because the video that you're gonna export at the very end is going to be in 16 by 9 format. So now I'm going to switch over to the speed hacks menu and you can see uh, for Jack 2 I have the EE cycle rate to 2 and that's I've found that that stops the random speed ups and slowdowns. It's important that if you change these you don't change them in the middle of the task because that's going to screw that could potentially desync your task. So it's pretty obvious that especially in Jack 2 I'm not sure about other games but there's a lot of graphical problems, like you can see the big shadow and the water is going to be uh, striped and the eyes are missing. So right now I'm running on DirectX mode, but that can be fixed by switching to OpenGL mode. Uh, you can see there's no shadow, the eyes are fine, the water would be fine as well. The issue with this is that it performs worse, so you would want to switch to this mode when you're recording the final task, but you can just play a DirectX before then, and it doesn't really matter. Alright, so now we're gonna try to make a task. So, the first thing I do is I pause the emulator by pressing P, and then I'm gonna go over to Movie, and I'm gonna make a new recording, and you just give a name to the file. It doesn't matter where it gets saved or what you call it, uh, it's just for organization. You can see in the console, it's now gonna say that it started a new recording at that uh, file path. So now, um, if you press R, you can switch between replay and record mode. So we want to be in record mode because that's going to allow us to record our inputs. And I like to make a few save states uh, because you want to preserve the very first frame of the task because that's how you're going to play it back. So I make a few save states and then I switch back to slot zero. And now uh, I unpause the emulator and I start doing my inputs. So you can see I'm making some mistakes. I'm just going through the level in some way. And then here's where I stop. So right now this is the final frame of the task, but let's say um, I want to replay it just to check if it's desynced or maybe uh, I want to make some changes to what I did. So right now the emulator is paused. Um, I don't have to load the movie up again because I have it hasn't stopped. It, when the movie stops, you'll see it in the console. So I just switch to replay mode by pressing R, and I just load back to the beginning of the task and unpause. And now we can watch uh, all our inputs get repeated. So 
So because we played it to the very end of the task, we can see in the console that it says that the movie has stopped. We've hit the final frame and it automatically pauses the emulator for you. So we just need to load up the movie file again. Uh, and we can see even there how many frames and how many times we've re-recorded. We've only recorded once. So I've loaded back the save state to the beginning of the file again, and we're just going to replay it again, but stop before we get to the final frame this time, so that we can make some kind of changes. So uh, I'm going through, and I don't like what I did here, so I, pa I pause the emulator, and I'm going to switch to record mode by pressing R, and now I'm going to make whatever changes I want to make. So now let's see if those changes actually uh, took into effect. So we'll just replay the task once more, which we've already gone over how to do. And now you can see instead of doing all the garbage I did before, now it is some different kind of garbage. Okay, so now um, let's imagine that uh, you're done tasking for the day or you found that you desynced and you need to reload from a previous save state or something like that. So imagine uh, maybe the desync was coming up or we just wanted to leave off at this point. So we pause the emulator here and I'm going to make a save state here and that's going to be the point that I want to resume at. So we're making a save state in the middle of the task. It's not at the beginning, it's not at the end. So I made a couple just to be sure. So now with those save states made, I'm just going to close the emulator down. And it automatically closes the... it might be a good idea to stop the movie, but I've never noticed a problem with it. So now I just reopen the emulator. So all I have to do is just open the movie menu and load up the movie that I made. Uh, and it automatically will pause the game for you. So now all we have to do is load that save state to that point that we wanted to resume at. So it's going to be slot 0 or slot 1. And then I'm going to frame advance just so you can see where I am. Uh, and that's the space key as well. So we can see we, we restored to the point that we were at. So we're just going to switch to record mode. And remember before we uh, Jack went and picked up all that eco. So we're just going to do something different once again. We're going to do a re-record. Um, after resuming from closing the emulator. So now let's see once again if those changes actually went into effect. So because we overwrote slot 0 and slot 1, uh, we're going to have to load our backups to the first frame, which was slot 9. And we're just going to replay the movie. So th the first change happened right there. And now our other change is coming up. So let's call this task done. So because we played through the whole thing, the movie has stopped again. To record it, we need to play through the task. So we're going to load up the movie file again. We're going to load, switch to replay mode. We're going to load up to the first frame. And then we are going to press F12. And this will bring up the, uh, the capture dialog. So you'll, depending on what codecs you have installed, you can pick one. I'm using the uh, H.264. Just for this purposes, I'm not really doing a high quality recording, I just keep the default resolution, but here would be where you would max it out to have the highest quality output that you could do. You'd most likely want some kind of a lossless format because you're going to have to render this again through a video editing program. So all you have to do is just browse, uh, just like when we made the movie, just save it with whatever name that you want. So now once you have all that figured out, you just click OK, and you can see in the console it says the capture has started. So now all we have to do is just unpause and let it replay through the task. So you can see how it's not really running at the full speed. 
it's definitely not 60 frames per second, but that's okay because it's just going to dump every single frame into a file and that file will be at the 60 frames per second that we want or whatever speed your game runs at. And the way that it outputs it is it outputs an audio file and a video file separately. The video file will go to wherever you browse, but the recording for the audio will go to the emulator folder. So we can see the replay has stopped, so you need to press F12 yourself to stop the, the capture process. But once it has, um, the video file is where we browsed, and we can see that it is at the full speed. Uh, it just has no audio, so if we want the audio, that's going to be, like I said, in the actual emulator folder. And then here we have the audio. So you would just need to combine both those two in some kind of video editing program, and then that would be your completed task.